one tiny mistake, and an entire company's data just vanished. Virtualization failed, and a simple patch turned into a full-blown disaster. Applications freeze, users get locked out, and businesses bleed money every single second. And backups don't always save you. So what's really going on? What makes virtualization so challenging to manage? And when it comes to patching, why is it such a big nightmare? In this video, we uncover it all. Hypervisors, backups, and the biggest challenge of them all, patching. But before starting, let's take a step back and understand what virtualization is. Look around you. Every app you use, every website you visit, every cloud service you rely on it's all powered by virtualization. Instead of running one application on one physical server, virtualization allows multiple operating systems and applications to run on a single machine. It is the technology that makes cloud computing possible and keeps businesses running efficiently. The core of this system is the hypervisor. It is the software layer that makes virtualization work. And that brings us to our first question. What makes a hypervisor? Think of running multiple operating systems on a single machine, where each of them is acting as if it has its own dedicated hardware. This is the power of a hypervisor. A hypervisor is like a master conductor in an orchestra. It manages virtual machines, making sure each one gets its share of system resources without interfering with the others. It creates, runs, and controls these virtual environments, ensuring they operate independently even though they share the same physical hardware. Today, it allows businesses to maximize their hardware investments and developers to test different operating systems. But that's not it. It also allows cloud providers to offer scalable computing power to millions. But here's the catch. Not all hypervisors operate in the same way. Some are built to work directly with the hardware, fast, efficient, and optimized for large-scale operations. Others will sit on top of an existing operating system, prioritizing ease of use and flexibility over raw performance. This distinction gives us two main categories to discuss. Let's talk about them in detail. Type 1 versus Type 2 hypervisors. We are talking about Type 1 hypervisors, also called bare metal hypervisors. And then there are Type 2 hypervisors, which are also known as hosted hypervisors. Type 1 hypervisors are more like Formula 1 cars. They are built for speed and efficiency. They run directly on the hardware without needing an underlying operating system. This means that they have complete control over system resources, making them perfect for business environments where performance and data security are the top priorities. Type 1 hypervisors are found in data centers, cloud platforms, and large-scale IT infrastructures where reliability is non-negotiable. If you have heard of VMware ESXi, Microsoft Hyper-V, KVM or Xen, you already encounter Type 1 hypervisors. On the other hand, we have Type 2 hypervisors. Well, they are the everyday workhorses. In contrast to Type 1, they run on top of an existing operating system. This makes them easier to install and use, but also introduce a layer of dependency. While they may not deliver the raw speed of Type 1 hypervisors, they offer unmatched flexibility for development, running test phases and personal use. VirtualBox and VMware Workstation are examples of Type 2 hypervisors. They allow you to create and run virtual machines on your laptop without changing your entire system. So that brings us to the most important question. Which one is better or which is more reliable? Well, that depends on what you need. If performance, security, and resource management are your priorities, then Type 1 hypervisors win. But if you need something lightweight and flexible for development or testing, Type 2 hypervisors are a great choice. No matter which type you use, all hypervisors share some key features that make virtualization possible. Let's see what they have in common. One of the most essential features is network virtualization. Hypervisors can create multiple isolated virtual networks within a single physical server. This ensures that virtual machines can communicate securely while remaining independent. Virtual switches and bridges allow administrators to configure complex networking setups, often mimicking physical networks with precision. That's not it. There's another critical feature called hardware abstraction and pass-through. Virtual machines often rely on shared resources, but sometimes they need direct access to physical hardware like GPUs and NICs. Well, these are important for things like high-performance computing, AI, and even gaming. Without them, virtual machines can't even reach their full potential. This is where hardware pass-through comes in. Hardware pass-through assists a hypervisor in assigning a physical GPU, storage controller, or network adapter directly to a virtual machine. 
When I know what it does, it significantly improves performance. Yes, different hypervisors handle pass-through in various ways, with some offering near-native performance while others introduce security restrictions to ensure stability. And, of course, we can talk about hypervisors without discussing storage and backup strategies. But the question remains, why is it so important? Well, every great system has a safety net. In virtualization, that safety net is storage and backup. But backups aren't just about taking a snapshot of a virtual machine and forgetting it. If that were enough, businesses wouldn't be scrambling when systems crash, ransomware attacks hit, or hardware fails unexpectedly. Just think of a company running dozens of virtual machines, each powering a critical part of their business. And suddenly one of them stops working. Maybe it's a power failure. Maybe it's a bug no one saw coming. Maybe, worst of all, it's a cyber attack. The team rushes to restore the system, but now comes the big question. Is the backup good enough, or is it about to fail when they need it the most? This is where backup strategies become the unsung heroes of virtualization. But how to do it right? Let's get into that. There are two ways to do it right. The first approach is outside the virtual machine, at the hypervisor level. Hypervisor can take full system snapshots, capturing everything exactly as is. Memory, disk, settings, everything. So, if something goes wrong, the system can be rolled back instantly. It sounds perfect, right? But here's the catch. Restoring from a snapshot means rolling everything back, wiping out changes made after the backup. If a company took a snapshot at 2 p.m. and disaster struck at 5 p.m., everything from the last three hours would be lost. That's where the second approach comes in. This approach is inside the virtual machine itself. File-based backups on individual files and data rather than the entire system. And this is exactly what makes them more precise. Instead of rolling everything back, only the missing or corrupted files are restored. No lost progress, no unnecessary resets. This might come as a surprise to you, but it's actually recommended to use both. You might think this is enough, but let me give you a reality check. Your problems don't end there. We know that snapshots help when big failures happen, and file-based backups are great for fixing small everyday mistakes. But even that doesn't solve everything. What if the backup itself is corrupted? What if the storage solution can keep up with the sheer volume of data? These are the questions IT teams have to think about before disaster strikes, and different hypervisors handle these challenges in very different ways. That brings us a cold war is happening every single day in the world of virtualization. This is a war between the biggest hypervisors, where each of them is trying to prove themselves. And even though most people never think about hypervisors, they are working behind the scenes every time you use the cloud, log into a virtual workspace, or access a remote server. But right now, there are three major players dominating this world. First, there's QMUKVM, the open source champion. It's powerful, flexible, and free, making it the first choice for cloud computing platforms like Google Cloud. But nothing free comes without a price. Managing KVM can be complicated, and companies often need deep technical expertise to make it work smoothly. Then, there's Zen. It's the hypervisor behind Amazon Web Services, the biggest cloud provider in the world. Zen was built for scale, designed to handle thousands, sometimes millions of virtual machines running at once. But there is no doubt about the fact that scalability comes with trade-offs. Its performance can sometimes be unpredictable, and when speed matters, even the smallest delay can be the difference between success and failure. And finally, there's VMware ESXi. This is the enterprise favorite. If a company wants stability, reliability, and top tier performance, VMware is often the first choice. But still, stability has its own cost. It's the licensing fees. VMware is powerful, but it's also expensive, and businesses have to ask themselves, is it worth the price? Each hypervisor has strengths and weaknesses, but they all share one problem that no one has fully solved. But which one? Well, we are talking about keeping everything updated without causing chaos. And that brings us to one of the biggest challenges in virtualization. Updating a hypervisor is not like updating a regular app. When your phone or computer needs an update, you click a button, wait a few minutes, and it's done. But for hypervisors, it's never that simple. Every patch means shutting down virtual machines, migrating workloads, applying updates, rebooting, and then moving everything back to place. Now, if there is a data center with thousands of VMs running mission-critical applications, banks, hospitals, governments, they can't afford the second of downtime, but delaying patches leaves them exposed to security vulnerabilities. This is where IT teams face their biggest challenge. When do they update, and how do they do it without breaking everything? The process is a high-stakes balancing act. One wrong step, one miscalculated migration, and an entire system could collapse. The nightmare scenario, patch that was meant to fix a problem, actually creates a bigger one, taking down systems that were working fine before. 
And yet, there's no way around it. Updates are necessary, security patches can't wait. But what if there was a way to update without shutting anything down? This is where life patching changes everything. We don't want to self-promote. From a technical standpoint, life patching is actually a good solution here. Instead of shutting down VMs and disrupting business, life patching updates the hypervisor while everything is still running. It's like changing the engine of a moving car without ever pulling over. The process happens in real time, applying updates and security fixes without a single reboot. Advanced automation tools handle the entire process, making sure every hypervisor in the system gets updated without causing any downtime. But here's the question, can every hypervisor handle life patching? Or is this the future only some will be able to embrace? No wonder the world of virtualization is changing fast. And choosing the right hypervisor is no longer just about the features. It's about performance, security, and the ability to evolve with the times. Having the right backup strategy, businesses don't just recover from failures. They recover fast and without losses. Life patching is proving that infrastructure maintenance doesn't have to come with downtime. But what comes next? Will VMware continue to dominate or will open source solutions reshape the industry? Will life patching become the standard or will some companies continue to struggle with traditional updates? The answers are being written right now in the data centers across the world. But one thing is clear, the companies that adapt will thrive, but the ones that don't, they might not survive the next big change. Are you staying ahead of the curve in the ever-evolving world of enterprise Linux open source? Techscares just released its Enterprise Linux and Open Source Landscape Report 2025 to help you do just that. This year report dives into critical trends, from enterprise Linux distribution and cloud provider preferences to the latest in Linux patch and vulnerability management. We analyze the impact of incidents like CrowdStrike breach and the XE vulnerability, and explore the growing importance of open source supply chain security. Plus, get insights into the state of enterprise AI adoption and how it's changing the landscape. Download your free copy of the Enterprise Linux and Open Source Landscape Report 2025 at Techscare's website and gain the knowledge you need to make informed decisions. Stay secure, stay informed, stay ahead with Techscare. What questions about hypervisor optimization? Drop a comment below. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until then, see you next time.